Good morning guys, how are you? Alex here from Hoppos once again with another video for you guys. So today we just got a special delivery. This car has uh, been in the works for a few years now. The setup's been in the works for a while now. And now that it's all kind of finalized and they're both meeting up, well, the car finally got delivered. So let me swing this camera around here. And if you guys can see that right behind me. Got a beautiful, beautiful 1960 Impala. Uh, owner's high row. And uh, well, the build was taken over by CNC Anaheim for them to do all their final finishing touches on it. The car is beautiful, but for the quality the high row wants it at, it needs a little bit more work just to get it to where it needs to be. And when I say a little bit, I mean like a few extra months. Um, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to see on here that's going to be getting redone. There's a lot of stuff that I saw right away that's going to have to get redone. Um, there's a lot of stuff that just needs touch and worked on just to get that show quality look. Um, and one of the issues we ran across right off the bat, and if you guys can see here, he is running a telescopic cylinder um, that is not ours. And I mean, that, that's no big deal if it's ours or not. But the issue with it is, I don't know if you guys can see here, look at that. That wishbone with the bolts, what happens with so much movement, I've seen these guys literally just fall right off and guys lose their rear ends. Um, or the rear end shifts over and damages the, the quarter panel on the side. And well, when you're talking about a nice fancy paint job like this, and when it's striped by Mike Lamerson, and it's gonna have the CNC touch, risking two stupid little bolts like that just to save a couple of bucks on a metal bracket that's gonna hold both sides. I mean, to me, it's just not worth it. You're talking about $20,000 paint job versus, I mean, I don't know what he paid for this paint job, but I'm sure that's what average costs on a really nice paint job is nowadays, realistically. But to see those two bolts like that, so what we're gonna do is, there's a few issues that we ran across right off the, right off the bat. Um, like one right away, no jam nut here. These mounts are actually crooked. Um, there's actually nothing holding those bolts besides, I'm assuming, Loctite. Uh, there's no lock washer, no jam nuts, nothing like that. Um, there's also a few other little things. Normally, a lot of these, bushings and holes on Impala are normally 5.8 and or, uh, yeah the bushing holes sorry normally these bushing holes are normally 5.8 and it looks like there's a lot of half inch bolts ran through here so we're gonna have to go through and, and inspect everything um, and again I still have to talk to him we actually have a meeting set up today he's gonna come we're gonna run over everything we got to do on this car because um, originally the plans were to build a setup and we weren't even gonna touch the car they were gonna install it um, everything kind of changed, the pace kind of changed, he decided to kind of take his car to the next step so he wanted us to do some final touches on it, get everything functioning and getting done right and so um, CNC Anaheim they're going to take over a lot of this finished work, there's a lot of issues going on here, um, he has some nice beautiful arms up here, the problem with the arms is they extended it, if you guys watched my, one of my last videos like two or three videos ago, they extended this arm uh, I know Hyro did, Hyro is the owner of the vehicle, he did give us the okay already through uh, text message or uh, DMs. Uh, he wanted to get rid of this wishbone right here, just it wasn't full show quality. So we're going to get rid of this guy, uh, but I don't know what else he wants to do. So, yeah, so we might even be ditching this whole rear end. It's a thought because it's a Toyota rear end and yeah, it's, Toyota rear ends are kind of like the herpes for low riders. And so... He wants a three wheel this thing, and the Toyota rear ends, they offset so much that if he tries to three wheel this side, he's probably gonna hit the tunnel over here. But we'll see what he wants to do again. It's, you know, I'm building what I wanna build, but the problem is here is we're building with his budget too. So we gotta, you know, make sure that they both line up and we can work together to where we can get this car perfect for him. So this car did just get delivered. We haven't touched it yet besides putting it on the rack. And well, it's gonna stay like that until he comes, until we figure out exactly what we're gonna do lay out a game plan, figure out total cost it's going to be for him, and then from there we'll move forward and uh, start chopping, cutting, grinding, getting rid of all that stuff back there that's not going to work. And um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. It might be a, a while on this video because we're going to have to re-chrome, re-engrave, or engrave, not re-engrave, but engrave. And yeah, well, it's going to be a beautiful car, but again, it just needs the, those little touches to put it 
past a street car and go into a show quality car. So that's why he hired a different team and we're gonna be finishing it off for him. So guys, we just got done with the meeting. Vic, what do you think? It went great. You, you ready? Oh, ready for what? A lot of late nights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got a lot of late nights ahead of us. Uh, the time frame on this guy is going to be crazy, uh, especially with Christmas, New Year's, and obviously you guys are probably going to watch this video after Christmas um, and possibly even after New Year's because well, what's happening is it's going to take a lot of steps from where we're at here. Um, we had another meeting this morning. We had Mario come in from CNC. We had Hyrule come in. Uh, we got together. We wanted to run through a full collaboration to figure out what was going to be done, what needed to be done, what needed to be changed, and be realistic on the time frames between on all of us. And then after us is going to California as well too. So we had to incorporate the, the batteries for California. Got to incorporate the batteries in here for Mario. And um, on top of that, we, we kind of touched bases on what we're going to do here, the game plan. And well, there's going to be a lot of changes being made. Um, 86 in the wishbone. He doesn't like it. It's crooked. Um, it's really not full show quality. I mean, it's nice street quality, but it's not show quality. So we're going to be redoing, making a whole new one. We're also on the lower arms here. We're going to be doing some uh, um, inserts and stuff like that. We got the car marked out. We got the, uh, I believe, Sam the Buffer's coming in, and he's going to be touching up some of this stuff. That's who Mar um, Hyro hired in to finish up some of this because there's going to be this car is actually going to be getting totally blown back apart body's coming back off actually uh, because there's a lot of issues that Mario has to address to the car and to the paint that wasn't done properly um, not that you know I don't want to make it sound bad but it's just the, the style of the car that Hyro wants it at and the quality he wants it at it's just not to full par for him right now so he needs to just take that just a little extra leap forward just to get it there and that's what um you know why we had the meeting this morning to kind of address all that stuff so he gave us the full okay and go ahead to do pretty much everything we had listed out and we got everything right here so we got a lot of stuff we got to do and uh, i'm gonna flip this over around real quick so we're gonna be touching up a lot of stuff on the rear end um we're gonna be dressing up this rear end a lot because it's just kind of plain and kind of like what everyone has on the street so we're going to be addressing that. We're going to be fixing some of these issues. Mario's going to be fixing all the issues up here. We're going to be repainting the frame. Um, a lot of the stuff down here is going to get touched up as well. And uh, he actually gave me a whole new set of arms. So we got the arms here. And we're going to be dropping his lowers off. And we're going to be uh, addressing some issues on these lower arms. And we're going to do some dress up pieces here. You can kind of see everywhere that has blue tape marked off is stuff that we got to do. So that's a, uh, you, know, you kind of see I got plate with the arrow. So we got to do a whole bunch of stuff here. And uh, this is the fun part because uh, for every piece of tape you see is a program. Well, first it starts off as a paper template, then a program. Then from the program to a hard piece, a sample piece, test fit, adjust any changes we got to make. Because when it cuts in paper versus cuts in metal, it's a little bit different. So yeah, that's going to be the fun part. But this car is beautiful, I mean, and we told him, and he knows that he could pretty much roll this car the way it is now. Um, but if he wants to get this guy up on, you know, uh, mirrors and jack stands and show it and get some lights under here, it's going to just need a little bit of extra love. So that's where we kind of fall in, and uh, everyone that he's hired in kind of falls in to take that extra care and detail into it. So we're going to be doing all that. First part for us, we're going to be blowing this rear suspension apart, um, addressing all these issues like no heim joint, crookedness here, um, no lock washer, no double-sided bracket. This is going to fall off after a few months. We see it happen all the time. Um, Got to check to see why they ran half-inch bolts in, in normally, which are normally 5 8 uh, holes. So we're going to check all that. Uh, again, we're going to blow this whole backside apart and build, start building him in his new wishbone. It can be custom named and logoed for him. We're gonna adjust his pinion because as you can see, his pinion is 100% wrong. So we're gonna be adjusting all that kind of stuff. And uh, there's pretty much, uh, yeah, I mean, I could pretty much sit here and talk to you about what we're gonna do all day, or I could just show you guys the next step. So guys, we're on our first day on this vehicle. Um, first half day or first hour, I guess, however you wanna say it. 
Uh, today we had Sam the Buffer come in and he did some touch-ups on the sides here. He's going to be back in here tomorrow morning as well. And as for right now, uh, what we got to do is we got to blow this back suspension back apart, um, take everything off. Uh, we're eliminating this wishbone, putting a new wishbone in there that's fully molded. Um, then we're also going to get rid of these tabs since uh, you guys have followed me you know these videos these tabs always break or fall off or the bolt comes out so we're gonna be eliminating these and we're gonna put the full three-sided bracket that we offer on uh, the bad part is we got to take all this off which is obviously already painted so that's the bad part but it's okay cuz uh, Mario and the crew over at CNC they're gonna come in and repaint this section uh, on both sides here also I don't know if you could tell in this video right here but when they did this it's actually mounted slightly crooked so we're gonna make sure we come in and straighten all that out so I got the new wishbone all tigged up actually migged up and tigged up and then fully uh, molded up too you guys are still hot So that's going to be his new one, and when, uh, this is just like our normal wishbone that we offer, the only difference is we moved this to the outside and actually fully molded this, uh, that way it blends with the rest of his uh, suspension. So now that this is all done, and obviously we got the custom logo in there for him, uh, we're going to be doing, and you can see, I should have put a rag under there before I broke this loose, but we're going to be taking off this brake line here, which is already loose, and uh, we're going to be dropping all his arms. So guys, I was going to show you how we do the wishbone mounts, but there's already a whole video on that. Um, unfortunately, we were using, utilizing the stock mount that's on here. We had to drill this guy out to a 5 8 hole. That's all done. The old mounts are off. We got the new mounts in place right here. Um, obviously, we had to grind up the frame more than we really wanted to, but it is just part of making this right. So we got those all done. Um, we're swapping out the hardware. We double checked these ones. Uh, and we were kind of worried about these being half inch and because normally these are five eighths right here on Impala So it looks like they converted these with the new tabs to half inch, which it's okay Luckily the center pin on this one was half inch and the center pin on this one was half inch as well. The issue we're running into now is This back one this is half inch half inch center pin, but this is where this is what we we're worried about. So this is a stock mount. This wasn't changed after we looked at it, but this is where the issues come up. When you're gonna have this driving down the road, that's a half inch bolt. You can tell almost the whole head goes in the hole. So this is where we're replacing those out right now. Um, we're gonna have to pop these guys out and uh, probably make some center pins because these aren't our trailing arms. So we're gonna have to probably machine some new ones to get it all right, but I'm glad we checked it. Um, that way there was no issues down the road, so thank God, luckily. So Vic's coming in, got some center pins right now. We're gonna test them, see how far off ours are, and uh, we're gonna machine some if we have to. So we got all the correct hardware in there finally. Uh, again, these ones were 5 8 which these ones on Impala back here are normally 5 8 as well, but when they did the Toyota conversion, it looks like whoever's doing the Toyota conversion brackets, they're making them in half inch which it should be 5 eighths, but they're making them in half inch for some reason. So luckily the back center pin was correct, but the front one was wrong, so that was just a quick swap out, which thank God we did, because it looks like someone ate it with a butter knife or something. Um, so we got the new ones in, we machined those out perfect, and uh, those fit good. Now we just tightened up all the nuts and bolts, and again, we did swap out all the hardware to grade eight. Um, now from here, of course, they're gonna be getting torn back down and getting chromed and everything, but as long as the grade eight is in there for now, from what we're doing, our job is done on this part. Uh, we also got the grade eight up here, up there, and all in here. So we are correct on suspension now. As you can tell, pinion looks good again, like it's supposed to. Now we gotta come in and do some cosmetic pieces that uh, we were talking about originally. We're gonna come in and make some, uh, I don't know, we're gonna make something here. That way it kind of ties in with the front arms, um, ties in with everything else we're kind of doing. But yeah, we're making progress. Uh, today we had Sand the Buffer here again, doing some um, color sanding. And then we also had the engine harness guy come in. Uh, I believe his name was Jimmy. He came in and dropped the harness back out because, well, like I said, this car is probably gonna go frame off again um, just to fix some minor issues that are going on with some of the paint and stuff like that. So we're gonna take it back off. Well, not we, 
but Mario over at CNC and their crew, they're gonna take it back off the body. As long as we get this done in time, um, we should be all good, which we're on day two now, technically. And well, I'm not as far along as I would wish we would be, but we're making progress, so that's all that matters. So tonight is a late night. It is about 7.30, 8 o'clock right now. It could be even later. Hold on, let me check my phone. Let's see. Yep, it's actually 9.30 right now. So it's actually 9.36. And uh, well, we're still going at it. I want to do all these. Well, I got Vic here taking advantage of his extra hands and his extra eyes. Um, so yeah, moving. We got our second insert right here. As you guys can see on this, uh, these are very time consuming. The machine makes it look fast, but we got our secondary insert on here um, just to dress it up because I mean the chrome looks nice but it just needs something extra back here uh, especially to blend with the wishbone so we went ahead and did a layer here did some flat if this focuses there we go did some uh, flat countersunk allens and we countersunk the material here there we go each side of the trailing arm left and right side and there's that side and then we also did this side over here the front side of the diff and on the reinforcing so the suspension part is done but now i'm kind of staring at it i feel like the only piece is missing is i need something down here because it's kind of plain and i know they're probably going to engrave this but I'm thinking of doing maybe like a, just a, a very basic border, kind of something similar to this one right here. So, yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to go. I got to tear this back apart anyway, so when I tear it back apart, I'll probably add an insert here. And I'm probably going to do it on both sides, because since each one has it on both sides here, this side, this side, this side, and that side, I'll probably do it on both sides here as well. Then, from there, we got to move our way on to this back section where we're going to make a back cover back here like an owl shape but see this is where it starts snowballing because then I look at that and then I see this one and I feel like it's gonna possibly need something here um, I'm gonna have to talk to them about it so this side's kind of lacking it too and I know I'm gonna be doing some plates down here where the hoist go and over there but then I feel like it's gonna need something here. Oh man. So this is the snowball section where you just do one piece and you feel like you have to keep going because it's not gonna flow right if you don't. So we'll see how this goes. I'm two days, about a day and a half behind right now and I'm tossing all these ideas in over here. So we'll see what happens. I really wanna do this section here because it's just, it's so plain. Like the rest of the frame, the frame has pinstripe paint and, and silver leaf. And everything else has kind of been detailed on the suspension part, but I feel like this is going to need something here. The bad part is reinforced, so it's like super thick, but yeah, I'm probably going to have to order a few more taps. Yeah, I had the, the fun part on one of these arms over here. I drilled it, I tapped it, my tap broke while I was inside. And while taps are hardened still, it was like nearly impossible to get out because it was like to the point where it was biting to tap and it wasn't fully tapped yet. And I tried to drill it with the drill bit. Obviously, that's not gonna work. It helped a little bit, but didn't really work. Couldn't get it with no pliers, couldn't get it with no vice grips. The arm's already chrome, so I was trying not to mess it up. So I tried to just very lightly TIG weld just a little stud on there so I could take it off. Didn't really work either. As soon as I TIG welded it and it turned it, it just cracked. So I ended up having to get the plasma and just pierce the hole, just like right through it. And it worked bad part is it melted all the heated the, tr the heat treated stuff along the edges so then when I went to go try to straighten the hole back out and drill it uh, it didn't really work so I spent about an hour and a half trying to get that tap out I finally got it out and fixed I ended up oversizing the hole bigger than what it needed to be came back in TIG welded real small beads around it drilled it back to size that way it get a quarter 20 uh, bolt back in there so this is the kind of stuff, and, and I wish I was filming that, but I wasn't. My phone was on charge inside. Um, but I wish I was filming that, because then you really see like the struggles that kind of happen when your car's already 
pretty much like chromed and done right there. And you're trying to make it all work without messing nothing up. And unfortunately, I messed it up. So we're gonna have to send that arm out, get it re-chromed. I had no choice. The plasma didn't heat it up, the TIG didn't heat it up. It was, of course, my grinder. When I was trying to grind it smooth, I kind of went zero and got a little happy with it. So we're gonna have to send that arm out, unfortunately. But out of one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen drill and taps. There was only one that really got messed up, so not too bad. I guess it is what it is. Gotta move forward. Can't just dwell on the crappy stuff, but now we gotta work our way onto the lower arms over here. And uh, yeah, these are just kind of boring. So we're gonna do some detail work on here. It's just kind of hard to drill and tap this, especially because it's rounded. And I can't really bang on this to get the form of the piece that I need. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to tape the crap out of these arms. This is the part I hate when it's already chromed, but this is what we got hired for, so. Yeah, time to get back to work. Got a lot of work ahead. So guys, I was feeling pretty confident about this car, but the problem is, or Wednesday, so actually Tuesday is uh, New Year's Eve, Wednesday is New Year's Day, which we're off, but they want the car back tomorrow morning, New Year's Eve, and well, it is not New Year's Eve already, um, or New Year's Eve morning, I should say, it's not even ready. I got so many pieces I still gotta cut and program and design for here that, yeah, I don't, I've never really missed a deadline with them. Uh, with any of these cars, I've never missed a deadline. Any of us here, none of us have ever missed any deadlines. And I don't want to start now, but I'm really feeling like this isn't going to make it. And that's kind of why in the video, I really haven't like filmed myself doing a lot of stuff or anyone else doing anything else. Um, it's just because it takes so much time. Where I'm kind of just doing like a video, like step by step of what we've done. Just to kind of save ourselves time. And like literally every single second of this is counting. So, got to get to work. Making a set of custom cups for high row 60 now. You got Vic up on the front of it, tearing down the arms, getting ready to swap out the new the swap in the new arms, new bushings, new back bars. And uh, in the meantime, I'm working on the back cups. So tell them. What's the wrong picture here? They want the conclusion from Vic. Well, it moves. It don't have to move. It doesn't have to move? What do you you gotta explain to them better? It's act like no one knows what you're talking about here. What's wrong with this arm? I don't know, I gotta take it off. Come on, Vic! <laughs> Everyone always asks for you. I gotta, I got a deadline to accomplish. <laughs> and and you can explain to them real quick? See you guys. I'm just gonna keep the camera recording all day. Or all night, so Vic actually works. <laughs> he gets so mad every time I say that. <laughs> what the fuck you doing? You modeling? Yeah. Modeling for you. <laughs> so guys, someone tried to be slick. And as you can tell, that is wrong. The back arm bar is not supposed to move. Um, it's supposed to be stationary here because these are supposed to be pressed in. And as you can tell, go to wiggle it. As you can tell, that is not stationary. And you can hear that play right there, so uh, the customer decided just to get a new set of arms because they uh, grinded away way too much. Actually, as you can see, hold the arm still. Go ahead. You can see the play right there. Um, so it just wasn't pressed in right, it was over grinded. Um, so we got a new set of arms here, got a new set of bushings. Unfortunately, we do gotta use the back bar on there, but the nice part about it is whoever put those in, they left us a whole bunch of slops, so the bushing should pop right out. So they should make it a little easy on us. So um, we gotta get the new ones in, get the new bushings in. Vic already has one side torn apart, the other side's loose, has to be torn apart still. Um, and we're just finishing up with the custom set of upper cups for telescopic. And I got one set test fitted over here already. And that guy's test fitted there. And as long as this goes in, Oh, 
We are clear. We're good. That wasn't supposed to happen, but we're good. Let's get this guy. You guys don't realize how hard it is to work with one hand and do videos. That's why in this car we're kind of such tight notice and or not notice, but such a tight deadline on this car. I haven't really did a lot of video of us working on it, just kind of more running through what we've been doing. Um, but this is the new setup for the rear. Uh, we're doing these with the upper cup to keep it from banging around because the, the frame is all painted and it's uh, unfortunately got already all chipped up. So we're going to be fixing that. Um, the guys over at CNC are going to touch up the paint. That way we're putting these in. This should keep it all safe and sturdied up. Oh man, guys, we've done so many inserts on this thing already. Let's see, let's take you around the front. We haven't showed you guys yet. Hey Vic, I'm trying to work. Can you get out of the way? All right, we got some lower plates in on both arms. You can't see that one, but and then we got a bottom belly plate in, front belly plate for engraving, and we did a trans cover here. Um, that's also going to house uh, some of the new steering components that are actually mounted over here, which are going to be moved, and we're going to end up mounting them over here. Well, we're not, but uh, ABS over they are. ABS is going to be the ones moving it over here. So we got all those knocked out. We also got the frame plates for the hoist mounts, which are right there. You can see, kind of see, they're underneath the hoist, in between the hoist and the frame, I should say. And that should keep the, the frame from getting damaged anytime you have to lift it. Also serve as a cosmetic cover. All the rear end ones in here. And it's just been time consuming, seriously, so time consuming. I don't know if I showed you guys this back one yet. And the back one's in place too. So we're making tons of progress, but unfortunately it's not enough. Um, like I said earlier in the video, we kind of got screwed on the time, on the time slots. And yeah, I'm sitting down. My legs hurt. Uh, we kind of got screwed on the time slot. Everyone had two weeks more or less on this build. Um, we were supposed to have two weeks to do the install. Unfortunately, it's kind of going a little backwards and we're making sure everything's done correctly. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that wasn't done correctly and uh, we're just addressing that now. And um, yeah, but we got screwed on the time because we had Christmas, we took two days off of Christmas. Um, New Year's, which is tomorrow, New Year's Eve is tomorrow. And we're taking two days off of there. So they bumped our pickup date for uh, tomorrow, New Year's Eve morning. New Year's Eve morning, does that make sense? New Year's Eve morning. So they bumped it up and um, yeah, and more work was added. So I don't know how that worked out. I must have really drew the short straw on this one. Um, but thank God Vic's here with me tonight. Gonna make this happen. Um, I've never missed a deadline with these guys, with any of their builds. Um, and we've had some pretty crazy deadlines and I'm just kind of taking this time just to kind of relax. Look at it, I'm sitting down. Yep. I'm gonna let Vic do all the work today. As you can tell, the shop is a mess and tore up right now because we were just literally throwing stuff everywhere, just trying to get stuff going. We're just like, we're moving from one thing to the next thing to the next thing, and we're just kind of like, we don't want to be in each other's way right now, but we're trying to get everything done at the same time. Um, but Vic's always in my way. <laughs> All right, guys, time to get back to work. So here's the, the arm that came off the car. Here's the new one. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably going to say it looks the same, but there's actually major differences in this arm and that arm. Um, one of the differences on this one, you can see in the background, it's actually still solid. Um, and this is actually the factory arm back there that you're looking at. We didn't do these arms, so I don't want you guys to think we did these arms. We didn't do these arms. Um, they came to us like this. But that's one, so it's really hard to get that looking nice because if you can see back there, you know, you can, it's just raw metal pretty much so when they chrome it you know it just leaves a weird weird shadow back there um, also around here because it doesn't really grab very well um, a few other things is we were just kind of worried about these welds in here so luckily he did bring us the new arms and the new arms do look way better um, these are actually welded up there good we took the ball joint off of that one right now and put it into the new one. The thing is right now is these bushings are actually chromed, which I actually do like. 
Luckily, they slid right out of the arm on this one. That shows you how loose they were. Um, but we just kind of semi-pressed them in right now. Uh, we do have brand new bushings for this, but they're not chrome. And these ones are chrome. So we're hoping right now with Vic taking off this other arm. Vic's taking off this other arm. We're hoping that these bushings come out and slide out as well because they're chrome already. Um, and you can see how loose they are. So hopefully they do. The problem is what we just ran into is when they built this, they built this without the engine in. And now the engine's in. And if you guys could look at the clearance right there. Yeah, you're right. There is no clearance. So, and then with them capping the ears in and welding the studs solid, what's happening now and the issue we're having is the arm will not go back. So now what we're having to do is we, I just put a call in to make sure everything was going to be okay. But we are having to take off the exhaust manifold or the headers, whatever you guys want to call them. Um, we're taking those off in order to take the A-arm off. But I want to make sure that because we're on a timeline here that they're going to be able to get a, a new gasket in time because obviously you don't want to reuse it. So yeah, so you know something that should be two bolts taking this off now is leading into an extra two hours of uh, having to take that off, fight the arm back off. And it's just kind of a mission. Vic's not very happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> but you were just complaining. I wasn't. <laughs> oh, man. So after some late nights, guys, me and Vic are tired. Mario and the crew just picked up the 60. And now I would say farewell to it. But this is only going to be part one of really this video. Um, just because realistically, they're planning for this car to be back roughly right around two and a half to three weeks uh, for us to do the hydro install. We only did the bottom. They're actually going to tear it back down right now, um, take the body off. They're going to do a lot of detail work on the bottom side because it was just, it didn't really get paid attention to on the bottom. Um, so now they're just going in and just kind of really, you know, putting their, all their eyes on it, making sure all the seams are all nice and molded, getting rid of any type of undercoating that was left on the car which it wasn't a lot, but it was enough for it not to look good. So that's what they specialize in. They do really good in the detail work. So they're going to go do their thing. They got two and a half weeks on their part. They're going to bring it back to us. We're going to do the hydro install. He just threw a few other things at us that we're going to be doing. Um, and I'm assuming we're probably going to have right around two weeks to finish that too. Um, so yeah, that pretty much ends off our video here. I know this video wasn't really like a how-to for you guys. It was more of a kind of just showing you what we did. Um, but we'll have a lot more for you guys on part two of this. Again, a lot of you guys complain again about these videos and how they're in sections, but you gotta remember these cars aren't built overnight. Um, they go from one shop to another shop to another shop to another shop. They're pretty much touching everyone that specializes in what they do. Um, ABS already touched it, uh, and I believe they're in orange for a lot of you guys that ask. Um, California Upholstery is gonna be one that touches it. Uh, CNC Anaheim, they're obviously in Anaheim. Uh, they're going to be the ones doing all the final assembly paint and they're the ones who picked it up right now So there's a lot of people whose hands go involved in this um, a lot of people that don't get seen and We just want to say right now. Thank you for everyone that has been involved in part of this build so far Thank you for Hyro for letting us uh, Be a part of it and giving us the opportunity to work on it, too So you guys will see more of this car. And I'm sure you guys will see it out in Probably Vegas. So you guys have a good one. See you next time